Let's talk about teams. So once again with Carsten Milberg. Michael. So we just have had Microsoft Ignite. So we're going to talk a bit about what actually happened on Microsoft Ignite. And of course, there was a lot of things that were happening. But today we're going to talk about a few things. So Carsten, what was the major thing for you on Ignite? Uh, one of the major things was that we have one-time password for MTR and Windows. Yeah. And what is that? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Let's roll back because that, that's kind of the end product. Is that uh, like Windows Hello? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just go up and smile. No, um, with the new version that are coming out on, on uh, the Windows um, MCRs, then it will, via uh, Autopilot, it will go in and generate a one-time passcode. Yeah. Which means that the problems we've had in the past, if you are installing an uh, MCR of Windows in a phone site where you're not out there, you will need some cable guy to do all the, the installing and so on, but you need to sign in. Mm. And historically, you need to go in with your username and password. And yeah. we wanna, don't want to give that to a, a third party vendor or anything like that. So, But with one time passcode, what happens is that he connects the device, power it on, it goes to the internet, go up to Autopilot, register in the Teams Pro portal, where we can generate a one-time uh, one time passcode. And the, um, the integrator can then take that code, type it into the system, and we can do all the sign-in remote from our IT office. Uh, to so let's it. ask Michael, you are yeah. on the other side. <laughs> yeah, if, so uh, for me, what would it mean for you? I mean, it, it, it really, uh, as an integrator, it's really fantastic to come up with this. We have had something similar for Android for a long time, yeah. and mm. we have been waiting for it. It was actually, I think it was actually more or less announced before Ignite, uh, slightly. It was whispering something yes, about uh, it, yeah. And it was uh, fantastic when they announced it, and uh, this thing where you could just put out uh, technicians and he mounted everything, and he actually are able to test the equipment before he leaves, because yeah. Mm. If we're not able to get the password and the credentials from the, the end user, we are not able to actually test the system. Yeah. So right now, before because we can do this, it's much easier to make a finished installation. So basically, one-time passcode, that is like, well, first of all, security-wise, we don't need to hand yeah. out our information to a third-party yeah. installation guy. And then I would say also maybe like ease of process of the installation. Yeah, I it, guess it, it, it really would be ease of a uh, uh, process, even though there's some things still we actually need to handle. And I don't know how it's going to work because we haven't seen it yet. Uh, it's coming now. It's actually rolling out now. So we can expect that uh, all depends on its ring, uh, not ring, but where you are in, in, in exactly, the tenant. Exactly. But, but let's say you have to um, to change something on the system, mm -hmm. you put in a new USB device, what happens? Because you have the one for the credential, but what about for, for the compute unit, right? So you need to log in there as well. Uh, and yeah, that's also a thing. It would be nice to have a one-time password for setting up. So I hope that's the next step they're going to I mean, about. you open up a lot of really awesome questions because now we have actually via uh, Autopilot, we have it up talking with it. And Autopilot, yeah. for everybody just to be aligned, is where you're stating your, your PCs you normally comes in, sign in, and you can push uh, software and all that yeah. stuff up to it. Um, yeah. So auto-provisioning a PC. So we will actually be able to push, not right now, but hopefully in the near future, we can begin push some application that are relevant like say if you have manufacturing programs that need to push out to the device as well. And so yeah, and, mm. and let's say um, like you can in the admin center, you're able to select which hardware it's going to be used for microphone and so on. Yeah. It would be nice to have possibility to make a profile. Let's say you go, you're going to make like 10 rooms of the same and you can put in a profile. And when you have put in this one-time password, it automatically gets this confirmation. Uh, and then... The, the technicians will not be able to, uh, they don't have to go in and select which hardware is used, etc. It just... Yeah. So, sounds like my, a, a more advanced configuration so, so, so. profile in Teams Admin Center. Yeah, yeah. exactly. The, it's yeah. not there now, but... Um, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, They're uh, working on getting, getting uh, templates for different rooms and so we can yeah. align what, what hardware. So one could imagine that would be one of the next steps that also have the selection of that hardware. Mm. But it's really a good uh, news that they bring, yeah. bring to us. So. A and a little spoiler alert, actually, that we are saying for Windows, yeah. it is coming to Android. And it's, again, coming yeah. soon and, and so on. <laughs> we hear whispering about Spring 24 that it will 
again, we have a provisioning model for the Android where you are typing in the code and so on. But I mean, this one time passcode is just way smoother than, than the one we know from the Android uh, systems. Exactly, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. really something that, that rocks. It's, it's kind of fun because when I started working close with Microsoft regarding the Skype room system and the Surface Up, everyone asked about autopilot. Yeah. And then only like seven, eight years later, we coming, <laughs> coming soon. Coming yeah. soon. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so perfect. That's a, I would say, a, a major new yeah. things coming out. What about you? What's one of the things that you find, find really interesting? I would say one thing that I found really interesting, but also don't know how it, customers are going to act it is like a management of bring your own devices. So if you have a bring your own device room, you can actually go and manage that in the future. So normally that was one of the biggest points for Microsoft saying, why should we invest in a team rooms? Well, yeah. you can do full management yeah. of the team rooms. I know that some vendors have a management platform for bringing your devices, but now we will be able to have it inside the pro portal as well. But would it only be certified uh, bring your own device? It, it would be not to my knowledge. Uh, I think that everything that your PC can see, yeah, will be all the information will mm. be sent to the Pro Portal. Okay. And, and one keynote here is that it needs to be connected at least two times before it being reported into the back in Pro Portal as uh, hardware. Yeah. Meaning that if you have your bring your own device, I plug in my PC first time, it wouldn't be recognized. But if you come into the same room and plug your PC, and then Microsoft have to recognize and say, hey. This space has been used for more than uh, this time two, two times. Two more persons. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then it's probably a, a, a set or uh, bring your own device. Uh, with then it. it will probably also be easy for them to put it into places, right? So <laughs> one could imagine that <laughs> yeah. you get the analytics and yeah, so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I th- and I think why is it that two or more needs to be plugged in? I think that's a good. I mean, if you're sitting at your home office, you're the person yeah, sitting yeah. in that. that the IT admin don't want to have that in their pro oh. portal, but it makes sense for bringing your own device room. And it maybe also makes sense if you have a like, hot desk where you go into the office mm. and exactly. pick whatever seat that is uh, available yeah. that day. And so. I also saw some interesting things where it's if the space, even though it's a desk or a meeting room, if that's connected to a location, then yeah. it can also reserve that ah, place yeah. within your own Teams uh, yeah, yeah, client, yeah. and then will also change the location within your team's client to actually say, now I'm in the office. Yeah. Oh, so now people can actually able to search me uh, from Outlook or Teams, and they could see where I'm at. You can see book, where book at. a if space. I'm and, uh, if I'm in the office, that's yeah. Yeah. pretty clever. Yeah. And that's been out now. Uh, I know there are a lot of different thoughts about new Outlook, and yes. uh, but in there you can actually set up already today. We you just go, I think, uh, a couple of weeks ahead, where you can define, am I working remotely or am I working in the office? Yeah. And then you can go ahead, and then that information will be processed as well in the back. Yeah. I know you can also set it on a Teams client, but here you can like <laughs> kind of go yeah, ahead yeah, yeah. And, and, and schedule it. Yeah, and I think the one thing is that it will actually do it right now when I enter the office. The thing is that your colleagues hopefully mm. want to know it before you go to the office. So yes. we can kind of plan and say, okay, today Michael will be in the office, then I will go there as well. So I think that, and I, and I hope Microsoft also take the intelligence for like, if I book a meetings which have the address, of the office that it will actually recognize that, yeah. oh, that day because uh, of in. that calendar invite, he will be in the office. But but I think there's so much going forward with Teams and uh, if we just move back to what some of the things that I personally liked about the Ignite and, and things they brought in, they also showcased this with uh, the ultrasonic. I know it's been there for a while, right? But it's mm-hmm. also something they talked about. Uh, uh, and I, I really love the thing with be able to cast, uh, not using two beacons, but uh, using ultrasonic now. So if I'm in the room, it will... Just, just for clarifying, what, what <laughs> is... Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ultras- so what is yeah. ultrasonic? <laughs> uh, ultrasonic is an um, is, uh, audio sound that's above uh, what we're able to hear. Uh, and it will... Um, the microphone of the laptop or phone will uh, hear this audio and then you'll be able to share or move your meeting towards the system in the room, basically. Yeah. So identify that you are in a room together yeah. with, with its, any equipment that you can use. And because it's yeah. a sound, it will normally be in the room if you close the door at least, and 
you, the the room you're in will be the ones that you're able to share to, or it will be the one that's in the yeah. top or something like that. Yeah. yeah so I would say the the major issue before was then when when you want to do a wireless casting or Microsoft mm. Cast or proximity join, yeah. when you're in that a meeting room with a Teams rooms, then it would use the Bluetooth. In, in a very uh, limited <laughs> distance. Yeah. yeah, I would say very limited, but also maybe in some cases too much. If yeah, they depending had, like, on the room location. Yeah. 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 So yeah. now with Ultrasonic, we will actually make sure that only inside the room. I'm yeah. actually able to see the, the statistic on my laptop uh, for how, f- how close I am to yeah. it. So oh, okay. I, have, I have like uh, three bars. And it will prioritize uh, yes. the one that's closest. When I'm doing my demo lab, when I have multiple yeah. systems, I can see the system far away actually at the bottom. So yeah. it, it's... Mm. And it kind of so also like soft customers saying like, how can we make sure that we're only presenting or casting within <laughs> yeah. my own room? I think that's, that's what yeah. I would say Ultrasonic will help a lot with. Yes, yeah. indeed. And yeah. also you, if you yeah. need to present, accept, right? So it's... Uh, you don't turn that off. Uh, mm. That'd be a bummer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. And what else? I mean, Ignite was a few days, and we have a few topics. So now, what uh, else was really interesting? Well, we have the remote desktop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, on the Windows devices, uh, I know there are some uh, manufacturing uh, administration portal where you can go remote into or you can do a remote desktop if you open that and so on. But what actually is now that from the Pro Portal, you can access uh, a Windows uh, MTR and you yes. can get the pictures, not just the screen, but also the console so you can see what's going on and, yep. and remotely work with that. So, mm. so all the problems that we have where we have to get out and, and go down and, and see and so on, you can actually do that from... From the coziness <laughs> of your of your desk, so uh, yeah. yeah, I but, would but say it's, it's it's quite interesting because when we started with Teams from some Windows, that was mm. actually blocked. Yeah, we could go and unblock it and then yeah. do remote, remote desktop into the systems. Mm. And now, again, security-wise, it was kind of okay that it was blocked. We don't but today, want to enable doing it from the pro, pro portal. Yeah. It also requires you have the pro license, right? But yeah. but again, yeah. it would just make sense in so many ways because now. As an IT uh, hot, uh, hotline or supporter, you'll be able to help a lot more people uh, from mm. your desk rather yeah. than going around helping uh, people press the right button, uh, do yeah. something else. You what does the screen say? It says something like that, or I can't remember. Yeah. Or it was going fast and so on. It's just let's yeah. see what's going on yeah. and, and we can exactly. replicate it. So uh, it will be interesting yeah. to see how it will actually show in the meeting room. Yeah. So if I'm sitting in a meeting room calling the IT support. Well, I need to approve that he can actually remote desktop into it. Oh, will you at least get a, a as a minimum and <laughs> not say that somebody is watching in? Yeah. And again, what if you have have created a confidential meeting where you are? How can you? So yeah, yeah. Uh, that's definitely something that needs to be tested out to find out how it works and what what yeah. options we can. But because I guess that yeah. you don't need to approve because how would you otherwise actually do management and support <laughs> so, of your system? Yeah. <laughs> I can do it remotely, but I need to go into the room, so room to and accept click, it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but unless it's a concurrent meeting or something like that, you are in. Uh, that's a participant already in. It makes sense yeah. that yeah, because uh, I would guess that if it just have a notification, say someone is remote desk tapping yeah. into your yeah. system right now, I can see what you're doing. Yeah, I think that will that be will, okay. Yeah, and maybe it will be able to blow out uh, the calendar and or what's content sharing or content something like that. Uh, yeah. on the screen. It, it's. It's, I yeah. think it's possible you, there's an engine behind and so on. So yeah. yeah, and that was at least some of the conversations that I had with with uh, customers was like, how much should we actually be able to see? Yeah, <laughs> we had a discussion. I think it would be fairly okay just to see the touch console. Yeah, but then remote desktop, you can actually also see, see the see front the, of the room yeah. screen. Which makes sense in some cases if you need to do a pairing. Uh, yeah, if yeah. you uh, that <laughs> issue should be gone now. That's fixed it, now. Never happened. A, um, a system where you have a whiteboard attached yeah. to, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's yeah. kind of makes sense. sense. We need yeah. to have some security around it. If yeah. if we have the a red dot or whatever mm. notification that it's someone remote desktop into it, I guess it that, would that be that okay. That would be okay. I, I could have a purple square around. Yeah. So Lives <laughs> <laughs> of purple. Yeah. Okay. So let's wrap this one up. That was a, a short uh, recording and yes. a video for some of the highlights from Ignite. Thank you so much for watching.